Hello guys. Again on the bench today we have a Raspberry Pi for Model B, but this time I am not going to be working on it. Instead, the first thing I will be showing you will be how to rework a USB connector as found on the Raspberry Pi. As many viewers suggested this is going to be a soldering tutorial. For this purpose, I am going to be using this donor motherboard since it has the same USB connectors as the Raspberry. Let's start with the main tools and consumables you are going to need. First of all, hot air station with temperature and airflow control. Next, we have a micro soldering iron. There are various tip types. Here I have chisel, conical, and bent conical tips. For the purposes of today's video, we will stick with the chisel tip. Then we have flux, which is essential to any soldering procedure since it prevents the solder from oxidizing and helps it flow. I am familiar that probably this is a knockoff of Amtec, but nonetheless, it works fine for me and it's a lot cheaper. After this, we will need a low melt solder alloy. I am going to be using this bismuth base tin alloy. Next up is the regular leaded solder. It doesn't necessarily have to be with the rosin core, since we are going to add flux either way. Last for now and definitely not least. We got a solder wick which essentially is a copper braid with some flux already in it that when heated can be used to suck out the tin from the solder joint. Now the first step to desoldering the USB connector is to apply low melt to all of its joints so we can lower their melting point of them and therefore we will need to apply significantly less heat with the hot air station to remove the connector from the board. Take your time to heat up the joints completely and allow the solder to flow and mix especially when working on a multi-layer PCB. Then while heating with 400 degrees C and 80% airflow I am using a pair of pliers to push inside and down on the bigger outer pins to get the connector out. There we have it, the connector is out with no visible damage. Next comes the tricky part. Now we need to apply a little more flux and then use a solder wick to clean all the holes in the PCB to be able to fit the new connector in place. Here my soldering iron is set to 400 degrees Celsius. Removing the remaining solder may sound easy but can prove to be very difficult, especially on thicker PCBs. If you face difficulty when removing the solder, as counterintuitive as it sounds, it can help to add a little bit more solder to the given hole and then try again to clean it. When you removed as much solder as possible, you can use a Q-tip and some isopropyl alcohol to clean the burn flux residue. The next step applies only if you are going to be using the connector you just desoldered, so you need to clean all the pins from bigger solder blobs. In our case, there is excess tin on the bigger pins used to secure the connector to the board. So I am applying some flux and using my soldering iron set to 360 degrees Celsius to clean the excess. Now we align and place the connector in place and check if all the pins are coming out on the other side of the board. If so we again apply some flux and proceed to solder all the pins one by one with soldering iron set to 380 degrees C and some leaded solder. Here it is important to be patient with the soldering iron for the tin to be able to penetrate the full length of the hole and make for a solid connection. After soldering all the pins down we let the board cool down for a bit, and then we clean the flux residue and inspect the work we have done. The next thing I want to show you is this desoldering vacuum pump. It is pretty simple to use. First you press the plunger down and it gets locked, and then in order to release it you just push the black button. Here is a close up of me using it. First, you make sure that the solder joint you are trying to suck the tin out of is fully molten. Then you bring the nozzle of the pump closer and press the button on the pump and it sucks out the majority of the tin. This method is mostly useful for cleaning holes, where the solder wick is better suited for SMD rework. Also, this vacuum pump may not be the easiest to use, but it's by far the cheapest option you have when compared to desoldering guns. The next thing I am about to show you is how to rework different SMD packages. We are going to begin with this SOIC chip. As usual, the first step will be to apply some flux and we use the hot air set to 380 degrees C to desolder the chip. Since this donor board is actually very old it is put together with leaded solder that makes everything easier. Then we take a piece of solder wick 
There is one trick for those of you who are using a chisel tip or similar. You can bend the solder wick like shown here for easier dragging across the pads. When the pads are nice and clean we take our chip and align it with the pads on the board and apply some fresh flux. Next, we take the soldering iron set to 360 degrees C and make a little blob of leaded solder on the tip, then while holding the chip in place we start gently touching both the pad and the pin above with the very edge of the soldering iron tip. In this way, each pad will get the perfect amount of solder on it, also by doing so it is very unlikely to make a solder bridge between the chip legs. After you solder all the chip legs I strongly recommend you check on every single pin by pushing lightly with a knife or tweezers to ensure that it is making a solid connection with the board. Now on the same chip, I will show how to get rid of solder bridges between the legs, which can be really annoying to deal with especially for beginners. As you can see here this time I try to solder a couple of pins at once with the solder blob on my tip and the result is multiple solder bridges. The way to clean them is pretty simple. You just need to wipe the solder off of your tip onto a soldering sponge and touch the blob again. When doing so small amount of tin will transfer to your tip. If one time isn't enough you can repeat this until the solder bridge is no longer there. Just make sure you have enough flux on the board, or else this ain't gonna work. There's an example of a pin not making good contact with the board. See as I push on it springs sideways. This means it needs a touch up with the soldering iron. Next, we are going to take a look at how to rework a QFN package. The first thing again will be to apply some flux and remove the chip from the PCB using hot air set to 380 degrees C. As you can see this chip has no leads sticking out of it. Then apply some flux to touch up the pads on the board with a soldering iron and a little blob of leaded solder. Before soldering you try to align the chip as best as possible and then you want to push on it while heating, for two main reasons. One is to prevent it from flying away and the other is that you can't really adjust correctly the amount of tin on the central pad before putting the chip on. So you leave a little more than needed on it, and then when you push on the chip while soldering you actually squeeze out the excess tin. As you can see here on the right side a small blob is formed, now we need to let the solder solidify while still holding the chip down and then you just can remove the blob with your soldering iron. Please be extremely careful when pushing down, because if you push too hard on it, the solder can spread all over the board, and also you could damage the chip. Now you can go over the pins with the soldering iron to make sure all of them are soldered correctly. Just apply some flux and drag a solder blob over them, that should be enough. Then remove any solder bridges and clean the board with isopropyl alcohol and a brush. To finish the job just inspect the solder joints by looking at an angle, that is how they are supposed to look. This may look familiar to you. It's an iPhone 7 donor board that I am going to be using to show you how to rework BGA chips and it will be the last type of package for today. First I am going to remove the audio IC from the board, using a little flux and hot air set to 430 degrees C. It doesn't really matter here because it's a donor board, but generally we are using high temperature because Apple uses unleaded and also this is a double sided board and on the other side of the board are the baseband and the CPU which you definitely want to avoid reflowing so we use high temp for as little time as possible. Then we dilute the unleaded solder with leaded, using a soldering iron at 390 degrees C. And then we make sure to remove as much solder from the pads on the board as possible using a piece of solder wick, in order to successfully solder the chip later. Please apply as little pressure to the board as possible to avoid ripping pads in the process, not like what I just did. Luckily the missing pads here are not connected to anything as you can see from the picture to the left. Lastly, we clean the board from the flux residue. Now we need to prepare the audio IC for soldering by first applying some flux and going over the pads on its surface with a soldering iron set to 380 degrees C and a leaded solder blob to remove the remains of its original solder balls. The next step is critical for the successful re-balling of the chip. We take leaded solder paste, which as you can see a lot of flux in it. Now we need to get rid of the excess flux or it will make the re-balling process a nightmare. 
So we take a small amount of the paste with a metal spatula and using the hot air set to 160 degrees C we heat up the paste so the flux viscosity drops and can be absorbed by the white paper on the background which is actually a coffee filter that we are going to use as a sponge for the flux. Once the paste is looking dry it is ready to be used so we can scrape it carefully to avoid getting fibers in it. We take a small portion that will be used now and the other can be stored in a plastic bag ready to be used in the future. Next, we take the correct stencil for the chip we are about to reball. in this case, the stencil that contains almost all the chips found in iPhone 7, and we align the holes with the pads on the chip below. Then we use a metal spatula to push the solder paste into the stencil holes so there are no empty or partially empty holes, while doing so you need to hold the stencil so it doesn't move, or else you may need to start again. After you are done with spreading the paste, you use the spatula to scrape the excess and then you take a pair of tweezers and you push down close to the chip so you don't lose alignment as you reach the hot air station. Then you will need to heat up the chip with 380 degrees C and 40% airflow while still holding the stencil with the tweezers so the solder paste can melt and form balls that will stick to the pads of the chip. Once all the balls are formed you can stop heating. Then when the solder balls solidify you can safely separate the chip from the stencil. This is how the chip should look when you are done reballing. Now we take the board, apply some flux and try to align the chip as best as possible. Then using hot air set to 380 degrees and 40% airflow we heat it up until we see it move a little. That's when we know it is in fact soldered and we can stop heating it. Lastly, I am going to reball an LPDDR4 memory module like the one used in my first video. All the steps and the technical details are the same as those for the audio IC you just saw. So I will use the time to let you know how thankful I am to all of you for watching my videos and supporting my work in one way or another. I really wasn't expecting so much attention so early on let alone ever to have posts written about me or what I am doing on Reddit or on big blogs like Tom's Hardware or Adafruit. Thank you so much. This really means so much to me. To all the people who said that they don't like the robotic voiceover I apologize, and I want to let you know that I don't like it too, but it really is the only thing I could do at this moment. I really hope this video will be helpful for at least some of you who are new to soldering and for those who want to improve their skills. As I said in the previous video I make sure to read every single comment under my videos so if you have any suggestions or you want to ask about something feel free to leave a comment. Links to most of the equipment I use can be found in the video description as well as a link to my Patreon, where you can support my work and any future projects. Thank you for watching. Till the next time, bye.